Hi everyone! Today I'm gonna answer a question that's been asked since the beginning of times, since the formation of our universe and formation of the gases into the planets and the beginning of human history, is which program to use as a 3D artist. And as a beginner 3D artist, it's kind of difficult to have that choice because you might think to yourself, well, if I'm gonna use this program, I'm probably not gonna be able to do this and that, but that is not the case and I'm gonna explain why. And I'm going to compare Blender and Maya. There is also Cinema 4D, but that's a topic for another video. I'm not even going to talk about 3DS Max, because we are not here to have a nostalgia trip back to the old school times. We are here to learn about the programs that people use in today's day and age. And I'm going to help you decide which one you should choose. And just to give a quick answer, it doesn't really matter which program you choose. So let's just jump into the comparison. The first one I want to talk about is Blender. Blender is a widely known open source program that everybody has been talking about. Blender is kind of like a cool kit that comes into the school with vape and a bunch of like flavor juices for that vape. And you know, people are like smelling it and like, hmm, that smells like a cheesecake or a blueberry. And I like that. And that's what Blender is for me. And I think for majority of the people online as well. I think number one is that it is for free. And that's a big one. If you're a kid on Windows 7 PC in the basement, you're probably not gonna have $215 to spend on Maya. And if you wanna start creating dope 3D stuff, you probably just need to try out the software first and see if you like it. Because what if you don't like it, you know? And you already spent $215 on Maya, and that sucks. The second one is that Blender has an easier learning curve. So when you open a Blender and you see that cursed cube in the middle of the grid and you're feeling all confused and you don't know what to do, and so what's the first thing you should do when you're feeling confused? Try not to feel confused anymore. And how do you stop feeling confused? by watching different tutorial videos online. And Blender is perfect for that. There are thousands upon thousands tutorials online available for you. And you know, back in the day, you would have to get a this giant book that is really hard to find, that has a thousands of pages. But now you just go online on YouTube and find how to create a 3D anime girl in 10 minutes. Another one is rendering. And Blender offers two different render agents. It's uh, Eevee and Cycles. And those words probably mean nothing to you. And just to quickly outline what it is, it's a 3D render engine. And to put it simply, it just shows you a pretty picture. And the prettier picture you want to get, the more powerful hardware you would have to have. And Blender offers you you those two different rendering engines, Eevee and Cycles. So Eevee is kind of like, you know, lesser version of the Cycles, but it's great for just like seeing what your animation looks like or just really great for creating something extremely simple. And Cycles is kind of like a more realistic version of that uh, rendering engine and it's gonna give you like a much better picture, but also it's gonna take more time to render out the image. And you know, if you're barely able to run Minecraft with 12 FPS, you should probably stick with Eevee because it doesn't require you to have have a high-end PC to render out images. And another thing that I want to mention is that Blender has a huge community. There is a lot of people that are using Blender. Maybe some random guy that you met on the Discord is using Blender. And what I'm trying to say is that if you want to talk about Blender with someone, about its features, about new stuff that came out, it's easy to find someone who uses Blender. And that's what's great about the community of Blender, is that there are a lot of people who are doing that. So what are the cons of the Blender? And this is a little bit uncomfortable and touchy subject for a lot of people. The first thing is that some people who are coming from Cinema 4D or Maya or 3DS Max backgrounds, they might find Blender's interface unintuitive. And I kind of get that, I kind of get that, because the controls are a little bit different in Blender as it is in Cinema 4D or as it is in, in Maya, because you use different buttons, and of course you can set up Blender however you want, but that's an extra step that nobody wants to do. The second one, it might not have all these advanced tools that usually pro 3D artists use, such as like Encloth, Beatfrost, or maybe some rigging tools. But the thing is, if you're a beginner 3D artist, it doesn't really matter because you're probably not gonna use those tools anyways. You're probably gonna create a donut or something like that. And you can do that in any program. Now, let's talk about Maya. Maya is an industry standard tool that is usually used in big VFX houses. And if you have to think about Maya, Maya is kind of like this middle-aged teacher that sometimes smokes cigarette during the school breaks. And you know, it's a great teacher, but if you want to learn something from the teacher, you're gonna have to pay for the extra lessons. It's used in big studio productions usually. 
And I don't know what's the reason why people are using it, but it's just everybody are so used to it and it's been out there for such a long time and they don't want to switch to Blender. So Maya is used in VFX houses and big studios. So if you're planning to work in a VFX house, you should probably stick with Maya because I mean, that's what they're using. Nobody's using Blender. I mean, there are studios who uses Blender, but it's quite rare. And another thing that Maya has all the tools that I previously mentioned, such as like Encloth, with which you can create like different simulations or like cloth simulations, Bitfrost, with which you can create like, you know, like liquids, particles and stuff like that. And also it comes with an Arnold renderer. An Arnold renderer is a renderer that's been used for Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Wars, Avengers, and the list goes on. But using that fancy renderer comes with a price. So let's say you're using like Eevee or Cycles, the render is probably gonna take around three minutes, depending on the complexity of the render and the settings that you put. But with Arnold, you can multiply that time by 40. And I'm quite sure for a lot of people, that's not the best case. Because if you don't have a super powerful computer that can actually run Arnold quite comfortably, then you should probably stick with Blender's render. Also, Maya has a great tool for the hairs called XGen, but with a new update that Blender actually recently released, Blender 3.5, it added a lot of hair features, so I think Maya's XGen might have a competitor. And we are coming to the end of this trip. Let's talk about the cons of the Maya. Number one is the price. If you don't have $215 to pay for Maya, then you shouldn't probably use it. Unless, of course, you want to work in a VFX industry, because that's what they're using, then you're gonna have to pay up. Another thing that sucks about Maya is the interface. It looks really, really old. And the reason is for that, because Maya kind of like has this thing where they don't want to change the interface too much, because people are used to it. And, you know, they don't want to freak the users out. So that's why they're like just sticking to the old formula of keeping the interface the same way. So now that you know about those programs, hopefully it's going to make it easier for you to make a choice which program to use. And if you like this video, leave a like and follow for more content like that.